we have the same kind of fault system that Japan has, the Cascadia subduction zone. Sometime in the next two, three hundred years, and it could be this afternoon, that fault system is going to rupture, and it's going to produce an earthquake very similar in size to the Tohoku earthquake. We're going to feel two, three, four, maybe five minutes of strong ground shaking. The ground shaking is going to cause damage to structures in California, Oregon, and Washington. Um, the earthquake is going to be felt in Nevada. It's going to be felt in Idaho. It's going to be felt in Southern California. One of the successes of the Japan earthquake is that the structures really did pretty well. And we're going to be learning a lot about how well the structures did to the ground shaking. And I hope that California and Oregon and Washington, our structures do as well. Uh, there are certainly ground shaking problems. The tsunami is very problematic. And as we saw in Japan, the tsunami is the great killer. If people don't get out of harm's way, your odds of surviving if you're caught in the water are essentially none. Uh, very rapidly moving debris strewn water is deadly. And uh, the only way we really can save people is to make sure that they recognize that the ground shaking in this case is their warning. They need to know exactly what to do without any kind of official guidance or warning. So if I'm out at the beach and I feel an earthquake, I need to know that that's my signal to get off the beach. I need to be aware of the hazardous areas. If it's an earthquake that lasts a long time, I need to recognize all the signs that have been put uh, around our communities that tell me when I'm in a safe area and when I'm at risk. And I need to get to those safe areas basically by foot because the earthquake is likely to have damaged the roads so badly that I probably can't drive. So that's a huge education lesson. And that's what I consider our biggest challenge. <laughs>